Today's video is going to be about things to check when buying a second-hand motorhome. And I'm in a little second-hand motorhome. I think it's an auto trail, if I'm correct. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? It's got end, a little end, um, end kitchen. Lovely sofas. I could just imagine myself laid out and then watching a movie. They are absolutely uh, spot on. Wouldn't like having to make up a bed all the time, but... It, again, horses for courses, isn't it? This is a perfect layout for someone. That's the beauty of, of motorhomes. Just going around and having a little nose on a, on a nice little forecourt. You can't beat it, can you? Now, let's crack on with today's video. Things to check when buying a second-hand motorhome. First and foremost, it is the most important thing to check, I would say, and that is damp. Damp. You need to check for damp. It is the cancer of the motorhome world. It really is. It's the rust. It is the disease, the virus. It is just awful. You do not want any damp in your motorhome. So how do you check it? You can get a hab check, which the uh, hab check will go around. They'll check with a, a damp meter. Um, they check in the cupboards. They check in the walls. They check everywhere for moisture. And then if somewhere comes up a little bit moist, uh, let's be sensible here, people. Let's not get rude. If somewhere comes up a little bit wet. <laughs> if there's somewhere that comes up too too damp, too moist, then it should. Because there, there is moisture in the air. There's moisture that comes out of our, uh, you know, out of our lungs when we're breathing. So there is moisture in everything anyway. Um, but if one area is too moist, then... They, you, you need to investigate that area and find out why it is, where it's coming from, and what, what the solution to fix is. Now, you can either buy your own little uh, damp meter. You can get them on Amazon. I think you can get wireless ones, so they, they're like kind of flat pads. Um, you can get ones that have got prongs. Now, they can leave a mark, so you wouldn't want to be sticking it in here, for instance. And not that you damp test there anyway, but you wouldn't want to be putting ones with prongs in because that would leave two little prong marks. If you have got one of them ones, then you're going to have to go into inconspicuous areas. So, like, in the cupboard at the top corner in the back and then do it there because then, one, no one can see that, the little prong marks, no one... It doesn't affect the, the look. It doesn't affect anything. Um, there are multiple ones out there and you can get a decent one for probably about 50, 60 quid. Every dealer will give you a hab check anyway. That should come with a habitation report and it will show you how much percent of moisture is in every little section of the motorhome. Or you can pay for a mobile tester. Now, it's like basically uh, um, uh, a mechanic, a mobile mechanic, basically. You've got mobile hab, hab checkers you can call one of them up and you can say, can you come down here? I'm looking at buying this motor home. I want, I want to have check on it. I want you to check for damp. Um, might cost you anywhere between, I don't know, 100 to 300 pounds, depending on where they're coming from and how, who they are and what they do, what services they do. And now, a lot of this might seem a bit of money and you think, right, I can't see damp. It ain't wet. I can't feel it and I can't smell it. So it must be fine. Do not make that mistake. Do not make that mistake. It could be the difference between you being falling in love with your fifty thousand pound motor home and travelling for for the next ten years with no problems and living the sweet life, or it could be the most painful experience you ever go through of, of buying something which then just gets destroyed and costs you thousands upon thousands upon thousands and thousands of money and time to fix you guys saw my previous uh, one of my previous videos where i had damp in the underneath of my shower my god i was beside myself the things that water could do to wood it would just turn it to mulch most dealers will, will be up and uh, up front and honest. They'll say there was a slight bit of damp in some corner or wherever it was. It's all been treated. It's now been out in the wet for da 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 da. And it's now scoring this. It hasn't done anything else. It's all fine. It's all been done. Um, that I could get, get on board with. But you do not want to find live damp. No, no, no. Second thing to check. Second thing to check when buying a second hand motorhome would be doing a HPI check. You don't want to, you want to know if it's got any finance if it's had an accident or if it's stolen. 
Because you don't want any of them. You not you don't want to be spending twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand pounds, and you find out it's been stolen, or it's been an accident, or it's got credit outstanding credit on it. Because they can come and try and take the motor home from you with credit. I don't really get into that. I don't really know the logistics of that, so I'm not going to try and say I do. But bottom line is, you don't want any of that popping up. So you want to do a HBI check. I think you can get them done. Again, most dealers, most good secondhand dealers run that check for you because they've bought it off someone to then obviously sell uh, so they don't want that popping up on them either they don't want to buy a stolen motor home they don't want to buy one with finance and they don't want to buy one that's been in an accident if you buy in private then make sure you run one yourself i think you can get them for like on a text message you can text a hpi thing and it costs like six quid or tenner or something like that um well worth doing the next thing you want to do is appliance check so, you're, you think you found them at home you want. This is the one you want. This is the perfect layout for you. Golden. Now you want to check all the appliances. You want to make sure the gas, the gas central heating works or the Audi heating works. However, the, whatever heating system it's got, you want to make sure that works. Get them to show you. You want to check the boiler works. You don't want to just hear the boiler turn on. You want to feel hot running water from the kitchen and the shower and the basin. You want to feel it all. Make sure the flush works. Make sure you, you make sure it's got a cassette, you know. Then you want to check the the gas rings, the grill, and the oven. You want to make sure they work. You want the fridge. You want to feel that that fridge is cold. Not just, yeah, you can see the pilot light, or, yeah, it's now an electric. No, you want to know that it works and it's cold. The fridge is cold. Um, what else do you want to check? You want to check things like your, you know, your stereos and all things like that, and all, all the things up front. Um, that's that's a given. But you want to check things um, inside the motorhome home and make sure they work. See them working. And know how to turn them on. Know how to check them. Um, because I, when I bought my motorhome, home, I bought it privately. Now the previous owners they'd never used the space heater. They only ever use the gas heating because mine's got gas, gas heating and space heaters when you're on, on hookup. They never use the space heater. Now, so they didn't know how to tell to show me it worked. They didn't know how to show me it at all because they'd never used it. So if you're buying private, it's not always negligence. And not let's say trying to sh cover something up and go, oh, it doesn't work, but I'm not going to show you or anything like that. Some of them don't use all the appliances in their home. Some people don't use the oven. In them at home, they just eat out or they eat sandwiches. The next thing, and a lot of people don't do this because they're worried about insurance, they're worried about you know what what's going to happen and everything. I understand that, and that is a that is a uh, a legitimate worry to have. But you need to take it for a test drive. You need to do that because. This could be, this one here right now, this could be your perfect motorhome. You've done all your checks and this is the one you want. You can see yourself on a nice, beautiful, you know, French road on the way to a little park up with your baguettes in, 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 in the cupboard. You've got the cheese chilling in the fridge. You've got the wine ready and you're going to be parked up and living the dream. But if you've not driven it and then you, then you buy it and then you drive it and you think, oh, what a dog. What, what a dog. Dog, what a hound. This is a sack of potatoes to drive. I hate this. Or it's too big, it's too wide, it's too long, it's too it's too sluggish, it's too heavy. You know, you wanna you wanna drive it, you wanna get a feel for it. I'm not saying take it to to you know to the other end of the country. Don't do the, the John of Groats lands end uh, journey in it, but you just need to go up and down the bypass, round a few roundabouts, turn left, turn right, come back, you know, feel the brakes, feel get get through the gears, you want to go on a dual carriageway, get up to five, up to six, turn the cruise control on if you if you've got it, you know, go around a few roundabouts, go left, go right, so you can feel it swinging, feel it turning. You want to get, you you know, the feel of the clutch. How heavy is it? How light is it? You want to feel the gears. Is there any whines? Is there any um, squeaks or, uh, you know, knocking noises? Because then that tells you, you don't have to be an expert, but if you hear a... As you're, as you're driving, you can go, well, what's that, mate? You know, I think that needs a check. Can we get a mechanic in to check that? You you know, I'm not a mechanic. You know I'm not a mechanic. Um, so you definitely need to check things like that. And because you might not like it, 
So this might be your dream bar home, and and you've got you've got the vision. You know the cheese, the cheese is just coming to temperature, and you're ready for that, ready for that park up. But this is just not the one because it's not nice to drive. I do think dealers have some sort of insurance, so you could like be trade insurance, so you can go for a, a drive with them. If not, there are plenty of 24-hour insurances you can get. You could ring up a lot of places. You know, even if it costs you 50 quid to get insurance for a couple of hours just so you can go out you can drive it up and down the bypass and they're happy to for you to do that and everything i'd much rather spend the 50 pound and then know i like it and love it or or know that i hate it and i don't want it those are the top four things i can think of that you need to check before buying a secondhand motorhome um if you've got if you've got anything that you think definitely needs checking and adding to the list i'd love for you to drop them in the comments i want to make an ultimate list i'm going to put an article out with this uh there's going to be an article that goes with this uh with this video so we can make a nice big checklist and you can uh i'll make it into a checklist so you can download it and then when you're going to buy a my home you can go yep check yep check yep wicked and then you can get the best my home you can live the best life go traveling and have a flipping good time now if you enjoyed this video make sure you check out this one and this one and i'll catch you guys in the next one take it easy